Uh, so welcome to the first webinar in our new Derby business series. Uh, Rose City will be hosting a new webinar every week um, for the near future. Um, so make sure you're following all of our social medias and our Facebook pages um, so you get updates and alerts as to what we're going to be doing. You'll also be able to review ones you've missed on the RoseCityRollers.com website and our YouTube page. Um, so at Rose City, we are a fairly large organization, and our mission is to serve the women, girls, and gender expansive individuals who want to play the team sport of roller derby. Um, we're we're going to be here to help other leagues. We want to make you all succeed so that you can play roller derby with us, which is super exciting. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Babe. I'm the volunteer coordinator. I've been a staff member since the end of 2021. Before that, I was a skater and a volunteer who put in 500 hours a year um, with the league because it's an amazing community and it's an amazing opportunity to meet people and play in a great sport. Um, we do have Meg, our marketing manager, is helping with moderation off screen. Yeah, and I'm here. If anybody has any questions, you can drop it in the chat or in the Q&A. And at the end, we'll go over all of your questions together. Um, so things that we're hoping you're going to get out of the seminar. Um, some ways to recruit some volunteers, training best practices for your volunteers, um, managing, reviewing your programs, and how to show appreciation for the work your volunteers have done and do that to build a committed volunteer team. So there are five steps to build, building a committed volunteer team. The first one is recruitment and then training, management, program review, and then appreciation. You should attempt to go um, through all of these things every year to make sure that you're actually doing a good job because each part of your volunteer program is dependent on the recruitment. It's on having good training. It's on being a good manager or having a good management team, as well as continually reviewing your programs to make sure that the volunteers are happy, that you're actually having roles and opportunities that benefit your community, and then the appreciation. So recruitment. To prevent burnout, you need an enthusiastic base of volunteers. The easiest way to do that is to look outside your derby league for volunteers. The larger your volunteer pool is, the more the work is spread out and the easier it is to prevent burnout. Make sure you know your volunteers. Help fit them into roles. Um, sorry, it just says that the chat is disabled. I don't know if Meg could fix that. Yeah, I'm working on that right now. So sorry, okay. everyone. If you want to type any um, questions or comments that you have into the Q&A for the time being, we'll go from there. Um, and I'll type a message as soon as we get the chat back up and running. Thanks. Um, sorry. So yeah, make sure you know your volunteers. Help them fit into roles that fit their skills, their interests, and ones they are enthousi enthusiastic about. You want to find volunteers that need experience to break into a chosen field. Um, is somebody trying to get into broadcasting? Do you have a streaming program? That's a great place to plug that person in. Do you have kids that are, um, if you have a juniors program, older kids that possibly want to go into teaching? If you can get them as junior coaches, that's going to give them some of those leadership and teaching skills that will benefit them down the road. Um, it's my favorite part of the job, getting to have coffee or tea or boba, um, learn how people came to roller derby, whether they're skaters or they're from the outside committee, and then helping them find their fit. A lot of colleges, nursing schools, and high schools have broadcasting, radio, journalism, or drama programs, and those are amazing people um, to bring in to help with announcing, live streaming the games, helping you run halftime shows. If you can get a couple people who are like, super into theatrical things, have a great presence, you now have a couple of people that can help manage your halftime so that your staff or your leadership can focus on making sure that the second half of your game is ready to get going. 
Um, the people are also generally really great with social media, design programs to help you with your merch, your art departments, um, making posters. The more people you can bring into the community, the more experiences and the more skills that you can bring in, the easier this becomes for everybody. Announcers are a big one. We tend to run three announcers for each of our games. You only need one announcer that knows roller derby. The other two only have to be able to keep up a conversation to play off of each other and then read any ad copies or announcements you have. I use a couple Facebook groups here in Portland. Um, they're just community pages that encourage volunteer postings. Um, they're a really great place to reach out to. And I've had a bunch of people join our community that didn't know anything about roller derby or have no interest in actually playing roller derby, but they're the first people to sign up every time we put our games postings. Um, we have one, Kim Ramsey, who has been volunteering with us since the very first roller derby game we've hosted was that back in 2005. And any time we do a posting about cleaning up our, our facility, she's the first one to sign up. Like, I love her to death. I don't know why she keeps coming back to clean for us. Um, and she comes out like to work our games. She's the most knowledgeable person that we can put on ushering to help people find their seats. If they have questions about roller derby, even though she doesn't play and she doesn't come to practice, she knows far more about a lot of our longtime home team ski uh, skaters and about weird rule changes than most of our newer skaters and people who do come out and volunteer from our community. It's amazing. Our social media manager and our marketing manager, who is Meg here moderating, um, they do such a great job of getting our calendar out on social media and making sure there's always a call for volunteers and a link they can follow to sign up on. And that's like marketing to your volunteers. So do you host recruiting events and how many games or how your season flows is going to depend on how often you should host recruiting events. We're actually doing a big event on Sunday. Our junior program uh, starts on September 18th and every junior family has to come on Sunday to learn about the program and learn about the games. So we're gonna do a little event like speed dating. I'm gonna set up six tables. Each table will have a specific role, merch, social media, art. We're gonna have a game day role. Um, committees and everybody gets five to 10 minutes at each table before we blow a whistle and they get to move on to the next one. They're super fun. They get people to mingle. They get new people to your community to interact with your long-term uh, skaters or your long-term volunteers. Or if you're fortunate, like we are to have a lot of staff members, we can actually have people interact directly with our merch manager and really get them excited about, about joining your committee. Um, as I mentioned, uh, volunteer links on event pages, our social media and marketing managers are amazing. Um, coming up in the near future, there will be both a marketing and a social media webinar. I highly suggest you um, either show up in person or watch it on our YouTube channel. Um, both of our people, Meg and Jen, are pretty dang amazing and somehow keep everything organized and easy on social media. Um, a big recruiting event you should think about is your officials. Um, we tend to bring people in. They get 30 minutes of a rough and tumble. This is every NSO job. And then we put them into a scrimmage with some experienced officials. The closer people are to Derby, the easier the buy-in to our community because that's what's exciting. Um, so just keeping people engaged. With older volunteers, as you bring them in, really helps keep that community growing. Um, a more additional marketing that will be touched on in the future, we tend to have some printed handbills that are super general. There is one for joining roller derby and there's one for joining as a volunteer or joining our community. It, the main purpose of these is just to get them to our website and get them to um, the information on how to join. And so when our marketing and social media webinars come up, like I said, I highly recommend. Here are some examples of what you will see in the social media one. Um, once again, our social media team under Jen does an amazing, an amazing job of keeping Instagram and now TikTok 
filled with stories and videos and pictures of people having fun. Um, in the bottom middle picture, there's Kim Ramsey in the white prism t-shirt. She's probably my favorite volunteer. And that takes us out to training. The most important part of training is making your volunteers feel like they are part of the team. Empower them to own their role and help them feel confident in what they're doing. Documentation is hugely important to ensure the job is being done. Don't rely on oral history. Checklists are great for keeping things organized, especially if you're having multiple volunteers for the same role, like setup. You've got a list of things that the whole setup crew has to do, and you have eight people. Um, having one checklist that they can all refer back to is super helpful to make sure that things are being taken care of. The most important part of your training is that it is constantly evolving. Your volunteers are going to tell you what is working and what isn't. Listen to them. They're on the ground and they know what's what's happening, but you also want them um, to have that buy-in where they're like, they have the power to come and say, hey, what about this change? Or, oh, it's always been done this way. What if we tried it this way? Give them the leeway to feel like they're empowered to give that feedback and they're empowered to make suggestions. If you see people excelling at a role or signing up for the same role a lot, make them a lead or a mentor. We have people that come into our merch and honestly, it's the best seats in the house. You're sitting on turn three, nobody can sit in front of you and you have a window staring out over the track. It's my favorite seats in the house. And those people sign up again and again and again because nobody's buying merch during gameplay. So they're busy before the game, at halftime, and at the end of the game, and they have an unobstructed view of the track. Those people come back time after time after time. And after they've been there four or five times, I start reaching out and be like, hey, can you be a team lead and giving them more responsibility? That gets their buy-in, and then they start feeling empowered. And they'll come to you and be like, how can we improve this role? Can we try doing it this way? What if we move things over to the side more? Um, happy volunteers come back and happy volunteers feel like they're part of a team. We also use an online learning management system called CoAssemble. And this is just an example of one of the trainings we have. This gives people an example of, or a set of expectations of what um, to expect when they come. Some people's hesitant or their barrier is not knowing what to expect. What is it going to look like inside? What should I be doing during my shift? And having that training on site on the day of is great, but giving them a little window into what to expect can also be super helpful. I'm one of those people that if I want to go out to a restaurant, I'm going to read the menu first. The amount of anxiety I have about I don't know what they're serving and is there going to be something here that I'm going to be comfortable eating because I'm picky like a toddler. Um, having an online menu or having an online like look into what I expect makes me so much comfortable and makes me more willing to step out of my comfort zone. Um, so this one right here is for our stream team and it's just an introduction to this is what the job is going to be. This is where you are going to work and these are the tools you're going to work with. Um, I also include a copy of the checklist or a timeline. So when they come the day of, specifically if it's a new time that they've been in this role, or they're brand new to our community, we tend to get volunteers that have never even seen roller derby or been to our facility, and they come in and it's a giant boat hanger of us trying to get things ready and it's a little hectic. And this just gives them like an expectation. Oh, this is the person I'm looking for. This is where... Um, I'm trying to meet people. We are very fortunate to use CoAssemble, which is an interactive online learning management tool, but you can do things like um, YouTube videos that you could publish or PowerPoint presentations that you can share. Um, on the backside of YouTube, you can also just share private links to videos that you haven't published yet so that only your volunteers are getting them if that's what you'd like. If you're more interested to see some of our trainings, you can definitely um, email me or contact me. I'll drop my uh, contact information at the end, but it's super helpful to let your people familiarize themselves with what is going to be expected of them. Managing your volunteers and your volunteer program. 
Um, this gets breaking down into a couple steps and all of these tie back to your training and your recruiting and your appreciation. Um, supervision, are volunteers following the pr procedures? If not, is there something that doesn't make sense? Is there a breakdown? Are we missing a training? Or do we need a checklist? Like why are we not following the procedures that we have in our head? And getting rid of your oral history and getting things written down is the easiest way to make sure that people are following procedures. Delegation. This is the hardest one for me. You're going to set your expectations and then you're going to get out of their way. Support your volunteers, but don't micromanage them. Let them free. Let them um, feel comfortable about making decisions. Let them do what they're supposed to do. If your training is in place, you don't need to be there to hold their hands. Um, problem solving. Empower your volunteers to take ownership of the role. Let them make decisions that's going to make their shifts or their volunteer opportunities easier. If they feel like they have to come to you for every little tiny thing, your whole day on day of event days is going to be spent putting out fires, just running around putting out fires. Empower them um, to make these decisions. And if they're working in a group, let the groups make decisions themselves. Diversity. The greater the diversity, the stronger your team. When you pull in volunteers from different backgrounds, you create a group with experience and knowledge from so many different sources. Maybe you have someone that specializes in live streaming or moderating live streams. You may have people that are HR specialists, nurses, teachers, electricians. All of your volunteers bring their experience and their skills to your community and make it better. The greater the diversity, the easier your problem solving is going to be. Conflict management. management. Not all conflict is bad. It can lead you forward um, if you choose to learn from it. Constant conflict, however, shows where your holes are. Are people butting heads because they're exhausted and burnt out? Great, you need to go back to recruiting. Are they butting heads because they are doing the same task but in very different ways? Great, you need to go back to training. Are they butting heads because there are no clear job descriptions to guide their work? Go back and fix that as well. All of our volunteer roles at uh, Rose City, we have a job description for each one. And I'm in the midst of finishing a giant online training where there's going to be a module for each job role. So people who come in for the front entrance, they're going to be able to see their job description, what's expected of them, an example of the checklist, and be supported and prepared before they even step inside our building. Part of your management is going to be scheduling. Um, do you have a system to track your volunteer openings? How do people know what's open? How do they know what to sign up for? We use a software called Get Connected that I'm also very willing to walk people through. We used to use Volgistics um, before we switched over. These are going to be more useful for larger leagues um, or leagues that do a lot of events. Um, but you can use shared calendars. It's a really great place um, that you can just post like a Google calendar and be like, hey, these things are opening. So people at least know that there's openings. If you're a smaller league or you do fewer events, I've seen a bunch of people use um, spreadsheets, which are really great just to make sure that your roles are filled. There is nothing worse than showing up and being like, oh, okay, did we didn't get a second chair medic and we need two medics to run a game. So, I mean, that that's a huge um, fire that we've had to put out a couple times. And it's like, great, we have this person over here. Um, Get Connected is really great because it does automatically remind people the day before uh, through email that they did sign up for an opportunity and it logs their hours for them. Um, Creating Facebook groups is another thing I've started doing, and people can RSVP through that Facebook event to be like, hey, I'm actually going to come, and you can have them just mention what they want to do, but some way for people to know what's open and available, when it's open and available, and then a place to start logging who's helping you, and you're going to start seeing those trends of like the merch people, who's coming back all the time. Who has been doing this enough that we can start turning into a mentor or a lead? Who's looking for more things to do? And then having those links, if you're using a calendar or a spreadsheet or get connected, um, as well as 
of Facebook events, making sure that those links are available so that people know where to go. Like I mentioned, our social media and marketing managers are super great. Every time an event is listed, there's a link for volunteering on there as well. So there's no confusion or looking like, how do I figure out how to do this? It's all together. And somebody did mention parents are a great resource for knowing what free volunteer signups the schools are using. We tried to use one earlier this summer. Um, it was super easy to use, but it created more work because I had to plug them into here. But use these things, find the free resources, figure out what's going to help your league be more most successful. And it could be a spreadsheet if that's the way whoever's managing your volunteer's brain works. Program review. It's a lot harder to fit this into your schedule, but this is how you make sure you are still moving towards your goal. So you're going to sit there and focus on what your ideal program looks like. Um, I break it out into our volunteer program. You can also use this for a skater program. But what does your ideal program look like? Are you there? Are your people having fun? Like this is roller derby. We should be having fun. Like number one, we're having fun. And then go back and look at those areas with conflict. Where are the holes? Where are people not participating? Um, ideally, you should be doing this yearly. I break this into our volunteer program is broken into programs. So I break this down into game day volunteers. Where are the holes? Where are the conflicts? Where are people not volunteering? Our coaching program. Where are people participating? Where are we not seeing quite as many people come in? But why? We also do special events. We have a skate mobile that goes out into the community with over 100 pairs of roller skates. And we're doing all this community outreach and just getting people into roller skates. Are people showing up for that? Where, is, where are the barriers? Um, a lot of those happen during the weekdays at lunch. So it could just be time of day. Rent and roll. Rent and roll is our gear renting library. Um, so everybody who comes to Rose City Rollers, you have to buy your mouth guard, but all of your other gear, you can borrow from us. And so do we have people in place to help keep that clean? Who's going through and making sure that the gear is still safe? And what is our inventory levels like? And then our committees. So that's going to be a big one for all of y'all, your committees, accountability, DEI, training, officials, budget finance, and also your board of directors. Where are people gravitating towards and what committees are people avoiding? Committees are a great place to get non-skaters involved into your community. Our budget finance committee does not have any skaters on it right now. Our executive director is there, but then we have this wonderful guy from Fish and Wildlife who's like, I'm here for the numbers. Every other month he gets um, he gets a meeting. During COVID, it was through Zoom. I think they've now had two in person. And he's like, I'm here to talk about numbers, how to make the organization better from a financial side and to have my like fish and chips and my free beer. Um, he doesn't come to the games. He's there to support our budget and finance committee. Our board of directors right now, we have a couple of alumni, but we also have people who have never skated. Um, one of them used to be a derby photographer, which is super exciting. And then we have someone who came to us only because he saw roller derby once and was like, I need to be a part of this. So reach outside your skaters and find people who have the skills your committees need, like they're super into to numbers and money, and they're really great around financials and budgets. That would be a great person to put in your budget finance committee. Um, your DEI, we currently have someone who has a degree in sports and marketing, and they're working in the DEI arena, didn't know anything about derby, had never seen a roller derby, reached out to us and said, hey, can I do an internship with you this summer? Um, the person is heading back across country from us, but wants to stay on the DEI committee because this is a community they found that they believe in. Um but finding where these holes are and reviewing your programs and breaking it down and doing small bits of it, this is where you're going to figure out, like, you're knocking it out of the park in one place, but what's floundering? What needs more attention and what needs more help? The most important part of your whole program is this. If you only have the time and bandwidth to work on one aspect of your volunteer program, I need you to work on your volunteer appreciation. Coming back from COVID, so many people have changed their priorities. And I mentioned 2018 is the very first time I put on roller skates in my entire life. I was 37 years old and was like, what better way to learn how to roller skate than by learning how to play roller derby? 
And then I started putting in 500 hours a year into the league. Coming back after COVID and spending so much more time with my family, would I be putting $500 a year or sorry, 500 hours a year into this? Possibly not. Um, So you really have to work harder on the people that are there. The more people you have, the less burnout, the happier your volunteers are. But your appreciation, be specific. Um, Kim Ramsey shows up and she does something and I'm like 100% she's getting like a written card for me and I'm like hey you came out to this event you did really great but I'm being very specific into why I'm appreciating her let your volunteers like know as often as possible that you appreciate that they're showing up that they're giving their time and they're coming this is especially important if you are like a lot of leagues and five percent of your skaters are doing 85 percent of the work Those are the people that have the historic knowledge and most of them just like they're there because they love it. And by telling them occasionally like, hey, you're doing this and I super appreciate that. That makes the difference between them leaving and taking all of that knowledge with them or them staying and be like, I'm going to help get this filled by somebody else. Appreciated people are happy people. Happy people are fun to work with and happy people come back. If you can manage a budget for tangible gifts, or if you have sponsors that can get some gift certificates as part of the sponsorship deal, this is a great place to use them. However, be very careful. The IRS does not like us giving things to volunteers. There's actually a maximum dollar value we can give every year before the volunteers have to start paying taxes on it. It's 600 and something dollars. It feels very random, but that includes, are you giving them swag? You can't cross that boundary. Are you giving them free tickets or free other things? If there's a monetary value on that, you have to be careful that they're not going to be either taxed or then penalized for it. Um, A great way to say thank you is shout outs on social media, milestone awards. We have two awards um, that we're going to be bringing back this fall. The first one being the Gold Star Award, and that is awarded monthly, and the winners are nominated by our Derby community. So it's an appreciation and award from their peers and the people that they're working with. Uh, We currently have a volunteer that makes all of the trophies, and it's presented at a halftime of one of our games. Our other really big award is the Lifer Award. So this one is also nominated by our Derby community, but it is voted on by our board of directors, and the Lifer Award gets like a season pass for life to all of our games. Um, And it's very special recognition. Previous lifers have included coaches, skaters, photographers, and then committee members who weren't skaters with our league. So you wanna make sure that we're appreciating volunteers as a whole. You can also get people together to celebrate who they are and what they do. And it's a time where they aren't working to support the event. So bring in your skaters and you can host like a social hour Um, During one of your scrimmages, have your volunteers come in, let them have some snacks. They get to see like a private game that's just a form of a scrimmage. Um, And then make sure that the skaters stop and interact with them. Most volunteers are participating because they love the community and they love the fact that Derby is so accessible and they can interact with the skaters. Some of the resources. um, So there will be some links for CoAssemble which is the online learning management tool that we do use. There are some other ones out there um, that I'm not as familiar with, but if you search through Google, they'll be there. Um, Get Connected is how we manage our volunteers right now. We used to use Vlogistics. Google has actually started a nonprofit area on their website to help give ideas. Wild Apricot is um, also has a lot of free resources. Wild Apricot we use for our a membership a management tool, but they also offer some very um, basic and easy to use volunteer managing, but their biggest thing is called Personify, and that's just giving you articles and how-tos and linking you somewhere else. There are so many free resources. It just takes time to find those. I'm going to start dropping all of those free resources into the Roller Derby Volunteer Coordinator's Facebook page. Um, this Facebook page came out of nowhere in the middle of my presentation at RollerCon because I had these people that I wanted to keep in contact with. And I'm like, how do I give you templates? 
how do I give you all of these free resources that I found? Um, when I do find random one things, how do I just like mass email it to all of these people? And so this will be a really great place where we can start sharing resources and we can share ideas. And if somebody is like, oh my gosh, I just found this thing really worked. I mean, I also want to learn from you. Um, I've been a staff member since 2021. And before that, I worked at the post office. And before that, I was a safety facilitator in the oil and gas industry. So I'm coming with just volunteer management experience as a volunteer. Um, so I 100% want to learn what everybody else is doing. But I want to share all of these amazing things that I have also found um, as I'm learning how to be a better volunteer manager. Um, if you would like to take a look at any of these things, you can email me. It's babe at rosecityrollers.com. I 100% would love to take you through any of the software that we're using here so you can get an idea of how we're using them or what we're using them for. And like I said, I am just finished creating a template that I use to build out our volunteer shifts for games. Um, that I'll be dumping into the Roller Derby Volunteer Coordinators Facebook page, and that will be a Google document, so everybody should be able to open that. Um, and that's it for me. At RollerCon, uh, that was the second half of a presentation that I did with our social media manager, Jen, so it's a little bit shorter than some of our other ones. Um, are there any questions? I kind of blew through that fast. I my favorite thing is talking about this and interacting with people and how do we make this better? How do we make roller derby better for everyone? It doesn't seem like there's any questions. Are there comments? Are there anything that anybody wants to share with the group? So oh, Anthony had a question. Are you able to put that in the question and answer piece? Um, Uh, the idea of recruiting outside volunteers to work on committees and not just NSO is mind blowing. Um, some of my favorite volunteers have come from outside of our community, um, but also people who've joined our volunteer group from outside our community, a bunch of them have actually decided to join the league. Um, I've had a couple of people who are like, I just want to be here to work the front desk and see what this is about. And a couple of weeks later, we see them into um, our intro to derby or our derby 101, which is how we bring new people in who have no derby experience. And it's so exciting to see how skaters become volunteers when they retire, but they stay part of our community, but how other people join our community. It's such a special place that I just want to share it with everyone. I love posting it to the website. There's a couple other websites that... Um, Volunteer Match, Handshake, Bened Benevity. Um, those are websites that specialize in corporate volunteers, um, but it's a great place to, um, to reach out and just, you never know where people are going to come. One of our biggest, uh, biggest volunteers on the official side started because he, his daughter and his wife played roller derby. Um, they have stepped away from playing and now they are he's the only one so he's the coolest one in his family left uh which is pretty great but he learned about this and he shared this through his company and now we have two other people from his company that never heard of roller derby outside of this is what my coworker does 10 hours a week um the link to the facebook group and for the volunteers coordinators i will drop that when this goes on to our youtube page and the rosecityrollers.com website. Um, does the limit on volunteer gifts apply to travel and other expense reimbursement, or is that a separate category? Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, Anthony. It's the IRS is just really weird about how things fit in. But if you have a team accountant, that would be a great person to talk to. Um, I got that limit of the 
the $600 limit. And I'm like, great, I'm just going to stay underneath that. Um, and then Laura asked if we can obtain a recording of this. And the recording will be on our Rose City Rollers a YouTube page, as well as rosecityrollers.com. There's a section that says news, and we're going to post these out uh, with links to the recordings. Yet somebody, we use Benevity um, prior to COVID and we had volunteers from Kohl's coming to our bouts and they paid us $100 per volunteer. That's a great thing. So some corporate uh, volunteers, you can actually get paid either by the hour they work for you or some volunteers get paid to come volunteer um, in lieu of a day of working, which is super great. And it's finding like Intel, um, I didn't know about Kohl's, but I know Intel does. There's a couple of credit unions across the U.S. that will also pay not just their employees, but they'll make a donation to your organization. Um, and Benevity and Volunteer Match will have more information on those. Um, my thoughts on volunteers joining the league and pay very reduced dues so they can vote on league affairs. Um, I feel like if volunteers are joining the league as skaters... Our expectations for our community is that we are very privileged to have staff members um, at Rose City. We're, we're super privileged, but we still need everybody who's part of our skating, our skating community to help us. And so we do have an expectation of volunteering um, and giving back to the league. Our goal being that we're going to continue making the sport better and we're going to continue improving what we're doing. But having volunteers, I love having volunteers have input, but I don't know how I feel about them paying reduced dues. Um, I think that's one I'll have to think of, but I'd love to have this conversation further if you join the Facebook community and get more input on this. Um, like I said, I'm still learning on this. I, yeah, don't tie voting to dues payments. I love that coming from um, my boss, Rocket Mean the executive director of the Rose City Rollers. And she followed up with, we allow folks to request voting rights as honorary members. Uh, this may be a little off topic, but is there a reason you volunteer 500 or more hours per year? Um, I did not do it for tax benefits. I love the community. It was something I was missing in my life. Um, I grew up playing fairly combative sports that were very involved. Um, the last sport was rugby. And then I moved to a town that didn't have rugby for non-men, which was really hard. And I moved from Canada to the US. And so I like packed up my life. I left my whole community. I moved down here to be closer to my grandparents. And I just, I wasn't finding the community I wanted until I showed up to my very first roller derby practice and was like, nope, this is it. They're stuck with me. They're stuck with me so much that they hired me. Um, and so that was my reason. I went to every game. It's finding the holes of where I felt like I could make it better. And then also going to volunteer so I could see free roller derby. I mean, that was a huge, <laughs> that was a huge benefit for me. Um, but that was my, that was my reason between 500 years. It was just constant of like, what needs to be done? Where can I help? Where were my skills? Um, really benefit this community that I wanted to be a part of. And I was working at the post office at the time. And so that was, you're so alone at the post office when you're out in the street. So finding people was my big reason. That was my big why. Are there any other questions? I feel like I'm rushing through this really fast. Um, but thank you everybody for coming. I'm like surprised 15 people that seemed like a lot. Um, but thank you so much. And I'm so excited to meet all of you um, through our virtual community and making sure that together we are ensuring the future of our sport and we're making it better. I think we're, I think we're great. I'll stay on for a couple more minutes. Um, but like I said, this will all be posted on the Rose City YouTube pages coming up. We're actually going to have Rocket Mean um, over a series of webinars is going to talk about budgets, um, boards, 
running a nonprofit? Um, how to run your roller derby league as a business? Like, how do you get employees? Um, how, how do you, I don't know, put everything together? Rocket Mean does so much and keeps us focused on where we need to be going. You're also going to hear from Jen, our social media slash merch manager and person who runs our art department. And she's going to talk about a lot about social media, um, a lot about merch and getting things up and running. Meg, who has graciously spent her lunchtime with me moderating this for me, um, will be doing a bunch on marketing and just like, how do you get all of this out there? Uh, we'll have Eva, one of our other coworkers, will come on. She's our athletic program manager. She's going to talk about running, recruiting, and managing the athletic program and making sure that there are coaches and people are being trained and there are training arcs. Um, Eva runs both our junior program as well as our adult program, which is super exciting. And then Catherine, who most exciting person to talk to, I'm sorry for the rest of my coworkers that are listening, but she's going to be so excited to tell you about like how to find a venue, how to work inside your venue, how to pivot when like COVID happened, how to pivot so that your league can exist, like the Skatemobile and weird special events, post summer camps for kids, you can make so much money bringing 20 kids in for a week when they're off of school, you're providing childcare, you're getting them on skates, you can spend half the day doing crafts. The kids love it. Um, and Catherine somehow manages to arrange and plan all of this and is a rock star at getting all of our events and keeping our venue um, game day ready. And so she'll talk a lot about, about venues and special events. Um, we're probably going to talk about our skate mobile in the future, which, like I said, it's a truck with over a hundred pairs of skates on it, which is super amazing. Um, we've been going out to the community. We've been working with Portland parks and rec on a lunch, um, a lunch and play program. And so they bring out lunches for kids and we pull out roller skates and we teach them how to roller skate and we just allow children to have fun. Um, so we've got so much really great stuff coming up probably for the foreseeable future. Um, so share with your friends, let us know what you wanna hear. Um, if you go back to the event page for this, put in your comments, what do you wanna learn? What do you wanna hear from us? What can we help? Um, what is your league missing? What problems are, your, are you running into? We've probably all been there. And so learn from our mistakes. Um, let us help you get to a super successful place uh, within your league as well. And if we have no other questions, I think I think we're done. Thank you all again for coming. And I'm super excited that this will help bring our little roller derby community closer together.